I mean, the biggest thing about Big Roy is the unknown, right? He's one only and, and there is no drawings and no schematics and everything is unique to him. Big Roy uh, was donated to the Manitoba Treasurements in the 80s. It's their star showpiece, and unfortunately, they've never really had a building large enough to store it indoors. So it's basically sat outdoors from the 80s up until the, the current time. And it was starting to show its age again. It was repainted once, but uh, it needed a lot more work than that. My first impression was to go really slow and, and, and methodically take this thing apart. And, and the guys that were working on them on the floor, well, they just want to get them apart and, and let's start rebuilding them because uh, the timeline was pretty tight too. We only had six months to do it. We were surprised by what good shape it was in. Mechanically, everything was in decent shape. Uh, there was a few issues with the suspension, which is unique to this tractor. And we overcame those. I mean, that was probably one of the biggest issues with this tractor was the suspension. Uh, the guys at Austin had put some blocks of wood in just to hold it up, pull the axles away from the frame. So uh, at any given time, there was everybody in R&D touched this tractor at one, one point in time. Uh, I had one guy on it full time, uh, Abe Giesbrecht. He started with Versatile early 70s, and uh, he was one of the original fabricators of this tractor back in 77, and he's still working here in R&D. So he was kind of our database to what they were trying to do, what they were trying to accomplish. So it was good to have him working on this tractor. We started, uh, the tractor came in here in the middle of November. By the end of January, we were to the point where we needed to turn the corner and just start putting it back together. So we had uh, half of November, December and January, stripping parts, cleaning parts, uh, separating parts into individual cooling packages, mechanical, engine, and then uh, in February, we turned the corner and we started putting the parts back together. Uh, after we had this tractor stripped and cleaned, we took the chassis down to the spray booth and they sprayed just the empty chassis. And it uh, weighed a lot less than it did in, in its rolling frame. And then I could move it around with, a, with our tow tractor. Uh, it just fit in the spray booth. We probably had uh, a foot on either end of the tractor. We could just still close the doors on it. So yeah, we were lucky that way. We thought we'd have to paint half in the booth and leave half out and then switch it. But we managed to get it all in. The cab was off. The cab was painted separately. When we brought it back and we started putting the components back into the chassis, we had it fully assembled and then they just retouched the paint. So there was no heavy spraying after the tractor was assembled. Uh, when we uh, when we took it apart and we removed the steering cylinders out of it, we put uh, solid links in to make it a rigid frame front to back so it, it wouldn't articulate. And then I pick it up at one end with a tow tractor and I can pretty well steer it in anywhere I want. Right? Yes, we had, to, uh, we had to build some brackets to tie the uh, front frame to the rear frame. Plus we moved it uh, without the wheels on, so we built uh, special skids to move it on. So there was, uh, there was quite a bit of fabrication to get it in a moving state without wheels. Yeah? Every piece of plumbing on this tractor is brand new. Every hose, every fitting is brand new. Uh, all the wiring again is all new. We've laid in new harnesses, pulled all the old harnesses out. So everything was replaced. And I mean, it's a challenge because we have no hydraulic schematics. We have no electrical schematics. So we have to figure out what they were trying to do. I mean, you have one hydraulic system, one transmission, and you had seven coolers. So I mean, you had to, wrap your head around what they're trying to double cool oil and where they're sending it and how are they regulating it. And yeah, it was interesting. I mean, it's a rear engine with a mid cooling package. So it's, I mean, it's totally backwards from what you see today. So yeah, we kind of had to sit around and look at this thing and talk about it and, and figure out what they were trying to do. Yeah. And it all worked. I think the most unique part of this tractor, I mean, it is a rear engine, mid cooling package, but it, the suspension on it. I mean, they did the suspension, it was in 1977, 
Uh, there is no suspension like this today on any uh, any tractor. So I, I think that's the most unique part of this tractor. It's a two spring per axle with a walking beam tying the lead and the rear axle together. And, uh, and these axles, they can oscillate independently of each other. So there's a huge wishbone with a spherical bearing inside that lets all this move around independent of each other. So it's, it's amazing what they've done there. Right? The camera was non-functional when we brought it here and uh, we were tasked with making this thing work again with old technology. We wanted that camera and that TV monitor to work. And you got to remember back in 1977, this was new technology at the time. So when we first got it, we couldn't even get the TV to work or the monitor to work. So we actually looked several different places. Some of the engineers looked and we needed to find somebody that could actually repair this type of equipment. A couple people looked and they said, no, we don't do, deal with anything that's got tubes in it or whatever. So believe it or not, Armindo and I, we actually found a TV repairman that that was his prime business. And again, this guy was probably in his early 80s. And we took it there and said, you know, we want to try to get this to work. So he says, okay, I'll start with the uh, the TV, so he took it in his back shop and he did a little bit of work on it and sure enough he changed a couple tubes and fixed a little bit of wiring on it and he got the TV working. So he was very proud to tell us. The second part was the camera. The camera didn't work, so uh, we had actually bought another one online of similar vintage. It didn't work either, but between the two and a little bit of magic, he got actually it to work. So that was one of the neatest things is finding a TV repairman from the 70s that actually knew what this was and got it to work. That was one of the neat experiences. Well, you know, I think when we started putting it together, I was quite surprised at how everything went back together without a hitch. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we had a little, a little hitch with the uh, gear shifts, but we worked everything out and it went together a lot better than I expected it to. There's, a, there's 400 quarter inch bolts holding the sheet metal on. And most of those bolts don't have nuts. They're, they're drilled and tapped into a, a sheet metal frame or angle iron frame. There was, there was times where everybody said, we'll never get this thing done, you know, but you have to stay positive. Yeah, we're gonna get this done. We, not getting it done is not an option. So we, yeah, but yeah, everybody's on board and everybody was, I think, really excited to work on this project. Um, because, because of the history of the tractor, Right. It's one of a kind. It's in a museum and we get the, the opportunity to, to make it better, make it like it was back in 77. Yeah. No, I don't think we do anything different about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's not one thing I can say, oh, we should have maybe done this instead. Yeah, no, I think we kind of got, went through it methodically. You know, we didn't rush any one part of the job. We understood what they did and why they did it, and we did it that way and everything worked out fine. Yeah, we didn't want to make it better, we wanted to make it as it was when it was built.